Hi, and welcome back to Bounce Forward with me, Tiff Hall. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which I'm recording this podcast, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to elders past and present. Stephanie DM'd me, hi Tiff, loving Bounce Forward. My question is, how do we actually lose fat? Because if I know about how I'm losing fat, I think I will be really more motivated. Some people say fat converts to muscle. Is this true or is it that fat gets replaced with muscle? What becomes of fat? Am I sweating or peeing it out? I know my trainer says sweat is fat crying. That's funny. Sweat is fat crying. One of the most obvious questions raised by all this fat fixating is never really addressed. When it leaves our bodies, where does the fat actually go? And, you know, it'd be good to know because it does motivate you a little bit more, but you might be surprised at the answer. A 2014 study showed that when it comes to fat loss, even health professionals are confused. And out of 150 doctors, dietitians, and personal trainers asked, only three gave the correct answer. Some believe fat turned into muscle, as you mentioned, or that it left the body via the colon, both of which would earn a fail in the exam, okay? So others surveyed believe fat was converted into energy and lost its heat, no doubt based on the energy in equals energy out assumption kind of thing. But the trouble is this would disobey a fundamental law of chemical reactions known as the conservation of matter or mass, which states that the same amount of matter comes out of a reaction as goes into it. It doesn't simply vanish. Put simply, fat tissue is full of lipids, compounds that store energy. Even if those compounds are broken down and generate heat, you're still left with the same number of atoms you started with. So after all that, where does the fat go? The answer is, well, it's actually happening to you right now. And the truth is, fat is converted into carbon dioxide and water. And you literally breathe most of it out. That's the answer. So when you begin to run low on fuel, you produce a hormone that when mixed with oxygen breaks down fat to use it as energy. And when fat is metabolized, it needs to go somewhere. Once converted to CO2 and water, over 80% of each measurement of fat leaves the body as CO2. The rest is released as sweat and urine. So there's a little bit of truth as to, yes, your fat is crying and that is a bit of sweat and a bit of urine, but really most of it is just when you're huffing and puffing, you're breathing out the fat. So that's really motivating, isn't it? When you're on those last reps and it's just – you think this is going to break me. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm losing my breath. My lungs are burning and you're breathing. (sighs) Just think, oh, I'm breathing out fat. That's going to be totally motivating to finish that set, isn't it? The only way to consciously increase the amount of fat your body converts to CO2 is by moving your muscles. So simply standing up and getting dressed more than doubles your metabolic rate. So you can only imagine the effect of a good workout. That's just an incredible stat. Studies show that the disposal of CO2 is greatly elevated during exercise due to increased breathing and sweating. So a high intensity workout will produce more huffing and puffing, more energy burn, more converted fat expelled, which is just great. So now that you know your fat is actually leaving your body via the lungs, you can use it as really great motivation. Um, And, you you know, that next set of burpees, you'll just feel so exhilarated knowing that all that exhaustion is just coming down to huffing and puffing and eliminating that fat. So fat storage and usage, fat requires energy in your body And after depleting immediate resources like blood glucose and stored glycogen, it turns these into fat stores. So enzymes break down triglycerides into glycerol and fatty acids, which are then released into the bloodstream. And that's that's how fat is sort of stored and used. Conversion to energy, well, once in the bloodstream, cells take up the fatty acids and transport them into mitochondria 
the cell's powerhouses and mitochondria is where energy is. They're just, it's so important. And here there's a bit of a process where the fatty acids are broken down in this series of reactions and this creates ATP, really important. And this is the energy currency of the cell. And ATP is what we're all wanting. We all want more energy. We want more ATP. How do you create more ATP? Energy creates energy. So the more you exercise, the more ATP you create, the more energy you feel. That's pretty much how you get it. And looking after that mitochondria of the cell, the the powerhouse is really important through good uh, nutrition, through exercising, through metabolism. You want to look after those cells. The breakdown of fat eventually leads to the production of carbon dioxide, which is a waste product, which you just expel through the lungs. There's a bit of water in that as well, and that's a byproduct of fat metabolism, which you excrete through urine, sweat, or exhaled vapor like water through breath. So if you're thinking about energy balance to mobilize and burn stored fat, the body must be in a caloric deficit, which is something I always talk about, meaning you consume fewer calories than what you burn. And this state encourages a body to use those fat stores, okay? Then you've got hormones as well, which are really important in burning fat. Um, Several hormones regulate fat metabolism, including insulin, cortisol, and things like adrenaline. Insulin promotes fat storage when you eat, especially with carbohydrate-rich meals, by reducing fat breakdown and increasing fat storage. In contrast, adrenaline and things like that and and cortisol increase during stress or exercise promoting fat breakdown. So hormones are really, really important and keeping those hormones balanced are really, really important. So in essence, fat is not physically expelled out of the body. It is metabolized into CO2 and water, which is then sort of leaves the body through mostly your breath and then a little bit through sweat and urine. And the weight lost as fat effectively leaves the body through the lungs, which is just amazing and crazy. And understanding this process can, you know, really emphasize the importance of balanced diet, regular physical activity, huffing and puffing is all good. There's some exercise where it's good to maintain a conversation. You want to be in like zone two when you're working out and then others types of hit and things like that, you cannot maintain a a conversation. And that's usually a sign that, yes, there are going to burn more fat. This workout's going to burn more fat because you're more huffy and puffy. So if you go for a walk, make sure you're either singing really loud to your best playlist ever, you're talking to a friend or you're calling a friend and you're trying to get that huffy, puffy, out of breathness by talking and moving at the same time because you're just going to burn more fat. Test your friends. Ask them, do you know where fat goes? Like, And they'll say, oh, it turns into muscle or it's, you know, we sweat it out and you'll say, uh-uh, wrong. It leaves through the lungs and they will be shocked. They will be shocked and you will be, yeah, really smart. <laughs> I just love, I just love that all the huffing and puffing actually comes to a head in losing fat and it's the biggest motivator for me and now you can be motivated too by knowing just simply the act of breathing is um, burning fat. It's great. Thanks so much for listening to Bounce Forward. I love having your company, so please DM me on Instagram at tiffhall underscore XO and let me know what topics you'd love me to cover. Don't forget to rate and review me on your podcast app. Speak soon. Happy days.